Hello my lovely and welcome to my channel. Today we're gonna talk all about endometriosis and hair loss because this is a requested topic and I received so many uh, DMs from you. Yoa, I just started implementing anti-inflammatory diet. I even become vegetarian or vegan, but my hair, I keep falling, you know, what to do with it? You know, is it related to endometriosis? Like how to stop it? So I thought I'm gonna make a video about it. Is hair loss related to endometriosis? Many uh, doctors actually think that it isn't, but I would argue here otherwise. After this presentation, you know, you're gonna, you can make up your own mind and come to the conclusion. But for me, the connection is very, very obvious. Uh, first thing which you have to know that that we shred, we really do. From 50 to 150 hair a day, if you lose, you know, if you find it in the brush, it's absolutely normal. Of course, no one's going to count, you know, the hairs. But a little bit, you know, uh, on your hand is absolutely normal. What can cause the hair loss? And this might be shocking because not many people know. Thyroid disorders. And thyroid disorders are actually connected with endometriosis. And I'm going to do the separate video just about this. But from now, uh, what you have to know that too much thyroid hormone and too little can lead to the hair loss, as well as stress. And this is the big one because we are all so stressed. <laughs> and here we've got the physical and psychological stress. What is physical stress for your body? Like, for example, childbirth is considered to be physical stress. The same menopause, the same, uh, for example, surgery, okay, laparoscopy girls <laughs> over here, or the blood loss of some kind of accident, that's all considered to be physical uh, stress. Psychological stress, like for example, if you're going through the rough period, if you're uh, arguing with somebody, if somebody died from your family, all that can uh, actually uh, lead for uh, to you losing your hair, seriously. And the medication, and this one is big because I know from myself that after years and years on medication, my hair just got so thin and I used to have beautiful hair. And now, you know, even though, even though I'm not shredding that much and I'm really taking care of my hair, my hair are so, so, so thin, as you can see, you see. So it's still way to go <laughs> after those 20 years of medication. But which kind of medication are contributing to you losing your hair? Thyroid medication, some oral contraceptive, like some pills, and many girls are on the pill for years and years. If you're one of those girls, I want you to know that there's absolutely no judgment here. I've been there as well myself and i'm gonna do this series of videos just about the contraception pills you know how to take care of your health how to get off the pill safely don't worry i got you cover it's coming some antidepressants as well so uh, acne medication, some antifungal. So, for example, if you've got some uh, infection with your nails, uh, that can actually uh, come with the side effects of losing your hair. Some anti-clotting drugs, uh, which means uh, the drugs which are preventing the blood clots, blood pressure medication, and even weight loss drugs. As you can see, the list is endless and later i'm going to talk about specifically um about the endometriosis medication how they affecting your hair uh, it also uh, very important is to mention that some nutrient uh, deficiencies uh, can cause uh, your hair falling down <laughs> and this is actually very big for the endo girls as you can see zinc and iron and we endo girls are losing so much iron because of our heavy periods and many many of us are suffering from anemia so this is very big if we don't have zinc and iron uh, it's very likely that our hair will fall off vitamin d vitamin c vitamin b12 and vitamin b12 is actually very interesting vitamin because it doesn't comes from animals like many people think uh, but it actually comes from the ground like for example you've got the carrot and when you pull up the carrot and you eat it uh, you give your uh, body vitamin b12 as well 
and uh, from the animal, how this animal is getting vitamin B12, because of course they graze, like the cow is grazing the grass. So, you know, she getting vitamin B12. Check it, do your research. Vitamin B12 is absolutely fascinating, you know. How come we, we humans still need it? Strange, but we do. We really, really do. That's why vegetarians and vegans should be supplementing with vitamin B12. But coming back to our vitamins, which we need for the healthy hair, is selenium and biotin. So let's go back to our endo medication. Danocrine, danocrine, danocrine. I, I never came across in this meds, but danazole is very familiar to me as I've been on danazole on and off for many, many years. They uh, come up with very strange side effects because from one hand side, they can increase facial and body hair. Like, for example, I had a lot of hair over here, a little bit even here. After danazole, I had the hair on my belly button and even around my nipples, seriously. But but those medicines uh, can actually cause hair loss on the scalp. <laughs> so it's very, very tricky, very, very tricky. That's why, you know, taking all this to account, how come the doctors uh, think that there is no connection between endometriosis and uh, hair loss? For me, of course it is. It will be very silly to say otherwise. So what are the ways to stop the hair loss? First of all, manage the stress. Easier said than do. I know, I know. I still struggle with this and I still have to catch myself to recognize that I'm stressed and to do the, some, for example, boxing breathing to calm myself down. I still have to work on it. You have to balance your diet. So anti-inflammatory diet is actually very good. So if you keep losing hair, please don't neglect anti-inflammatory diet. Keep on going because you will provide your body with a lot of vitamins and it will stop. It will eventually stop. Okay. Don't use harsh hair products. Uh, all those uh, hair products with SLS, all those, you know, with horrible chemicals, keep away from it. Add some good fats with omega-3 and omega-6, like, for example, from the nuts, uh, for, for example, from the seeds. Do the scalp massage because it's increasing the blood flow on your hair as well as uh, keep stimulating your hair to grow. And supplement with vitamin, as I mentioned, vitamin C, D, B12, zinc selenium biotin and iron and the last thing what will help with a hair grow reduce the heat so for example uh, let your hair dry naturally don't use the hair dryer don't uh, use the the thing to curl your hair or to straighten your hair just don't it actually destroying your hair Cool off the showers. So, for example, when you're taking the shower at, at the end, I, I love warm showers, by the way. But at the end, I'm trying to end it with a cold shower just to, you know, uh, close uh, all the uh, all all the things on my hair. I don't know the, the word in English, but you know what I mean. You know what I mean. Don't brush with hair as well and avoid dieting because the dieting, it's not good. And what if you are on the medication? Should you just drop all the medication? Please don't. First of all, a consult with your doctors. So every single medication uh, you know, you have to discuss it with your doctor. Okay, so don't uh, don't listen to the people on the YouTube or on the internet. Just tell your doctor. Tell him like you know. I know that these med medicines are affecting not just uh, my body but also my hair, and I'm concerned. And can we please, you know, swap the medicine or get off it or just uh, cut the dose in half? Just be honest. Just be honest. Tell him that you did your own research and your concern. Okay, I'm always advocating for speaking with your doctor uh, openly, and. Uh, let the doctor know that you know and you're doing your own research as well. I hope that video helped a little bit and I hope uh, some things are more clear now. If you like it, please click the like button, subscribe and share it with everyone so we can all come together and heal together. As always,